Oh, there we go. Hello friends. Today I'm going to be doing a pretty big book haul. It has been a really long time since I've done one of these. I've been going to the bookstore whenever I'm having like a really bad mental health day and my wallet has, has not been, um, it's not been so good for my wallet. But it's been really good for my heart and soul and mind, so it's worth it, right? So I have different piles. For example, this is the YA pile, classics pile, and then mysteries and thrillers, and then I have middle grade and romance and historical fiction, and even some graphic novels and some manga. I've got a wide variety here. And if I do say so myself, a lot of these books are beautiful. They're just so beautiful. They're the type of books that you just want to hang the cover in a frame so you can look at it all day. That's how beautiful. So let's start with the adult category. A bunch of these are adult, like adult historical fiction and adult romance, but this is just adult that I didn't know where to put anywhere else. Okay, this first one, let me just show you the cover because it's beautiful. This is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. And what drew me to this one, one was the cover and two was the fact that it's about like an academy and I think also like a competition or games, which is, those are just two things that I love to read about. All I really know is that it's about an elite academy nestled far away in the woods and society's best and brightest are trained for this like grand competition. They call it the great game. And the game contains music, art, math, poetry, and philosophy. The bottom of the synopsis says, as the legendary midsummer game approaches, the climax of the Academy's year-long buried secrets rise to the surface and centuries-old traditions are shockingly overturned. That's all I know, but it sounds so good. And then up next, I have another one by Bridget Collins, and that is The Binding. What drew me to this one was the fact that people have said it's a gothic book, has gothic vibes, um, and also it has to do with like letters and writing and books. But even just knowing that, it sounds so good. And look at the pretty spine. This is one of the ones that I just wanna like hang on my wall. It's so pretty. Okay, and then next I have The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charlie M McCary. I wanna say McCary. Does that look like McCary to you? McKessie? Oh no, it's McKessie, that's an S. That's an S, right. Anyway, so this one I'm pretty sure was the Barnes and Noble book of the year in either like 2019 or 2020. I'm pretty sure that it is good for any age group. And I've kind of heard that it gives like Winnie the Pooh vibes, but different. The end pages are gorgeous. They look very vintage and hand drawn. And there's gorgeous calligraphy. So excited for it. I'm gonna say that after every book. I'm so excited. This book's made me happy. Okay. And then the last book in this category is Rise and Shine Benedict Stone by Phaedra Patrick. I love the willow tree on the cover. It is set in England in a smaller English village. So I'm pretty sure it's about this man who one day the daughter of his estranged brother shows up on his doorstep. They don't talk anymore. His brother now lives in America. And so he's like, why is she here? She invites herself into his life, kind of turns it upside down, throws in some excitement and adventure to our main character, Benedict, who, you know, could probably use some fun adventure. Let's do the mysteries and thrillers next. First up, I have The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. What drew me into this one was the fact that I just love murder mysteries and I love when it's regular people solving the mysteries, not like a detective. I mean, I love detectives, Hercule Poirot, I love him, but I love when it's the regular people. And this is about elderly people that live at, I think it's like a retirement home, a retirement village. And it's about four unlikely friends who get together every week and in the jigsaw room, they they discuss unsolved crimes and together they call themselves the Thursday Murder Club. And then one day an actual crime lands in their lap and they decide to take it upon themselves to solve it. And I've heard really good things. A few of you saw it in my pile on Instagram and DM'd me saying that you really, really liked it and think that I will like it. So I'm really excited. Next up for mysteries and thrillers, I have my July pick from book of the month. That is 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. What drew me to this one were multiple things. One, it is set in Ireland. I believe it's set mostly in Dublin. Two, um, it's 
Okay, it's mostly just because it was set in Ireland and Scotland, but the plot sounds really intriguing. It's about these two people who start dating, but they start dating during COVID. And I read a bunch of reviews and people said that COVID was dealt with really well in this book, that it wasn't a huge part of the plot. The only way that COVID was really important is the fact that they start dating, but nobody really knows about it because it's during lockdown and people are hanging out with their friends. And I think that's really the only role that COVID plays in it. So no one knew they were together and now one of them is dead. And that's all I know. And I'm very intrigued. Okay, and then lastly in the thriller and mysteries category, I have Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw. This one was actually sent to me in my PO box, so I had no idea what it was about, but then I picked it up and read the back, and oh my gosh, this is such a perfect book for me. If you love like Halloween and the ghost tours, vampires, New Orleans, I usually just try to describe the books, but I have to read the back to you because it's so good. Okay, New Orleans Fing Fest 1995. Mina's having a summer to die for. Mina arrives in New Orleans to visit her estranged sister Libby. She loves nothing more than creepy horror movies and can't wait to explore the city's darkest secrets. Vampire tours, seedy bars, spooky cemeteries, disturbing local myths. It had me hooked after just that paragraph. I was like, okay, I want to read it, but it gets so good. Okay, so Mina lands a part-time job at a horror movie mansion and it meets Jared. That's my husband's name. Um, Libby's gorgeous housemate and fellow horror enthusiast. But the perfect summer bliss is broken when she stumbles upon the body of a girl with puncture marks on her neck, clutching a lock of hair that suspiciously resembles Libby's. Someone is replicating New Orleans' most brutal supernatural killings. Mina must discover the truth and prove her sister's innocence before she becomes the victim of another myth. Like, what? I love the trope of somebody replicating something from history. I think it's so fun to read about. So if you sent this to me, definitely let me know. I would love to thank you personally. I cannot wait to dive into this one. I think it's gonna be the perfect transitional book from summer to autumn to get me like really, really excited for a scary season. Okay, future Desi here coming at you with a little break in the video to thank our sponsor, Honey. If you're like me and do a lot of online book shopping, that is where Honey comes in. Honey is a free online shopping tool that searches for coupon codes and applies the biggest discount that it can find to your cart. You don't have to change where you shop or how you shop. Honey works on lots of your favorite websites and it applies discounts and saves you money in seconds. When there's a coupon, Honey finds discounts of 18% on average. And Honey has over 100,000 five-star reviews on Google. I used Honey to help me save money when purchasing a decent amount of books that are included in this haul. You can use it literally anywhere you do online shopping. Honey is free, it's super easy to use. Once you have it on your computer, all you need to do is go to the checkout page of whatever online shopping you're doing and then Honey will pop up, and then all you need to do is press the button and it will search for all of the discount codes that it can find and apply the one that will save you the most money. And you just feel better about making your purchases knowing that you're getting the best deal out there. That's what makes me feel the happiest, just knowing that I didn't miss out on some code that's actually going on somewhere on the internet that I don't know about, because Honey does all the work for me. You can go to joyandhoney.com slash darlingdesi to get Honey and to start saving money on your purchases. And I will also have the link down in my description box as well. Thank you again so much to honey for sponsoring this video. Now, without further ado, let's get back to the book haul. Future Desiree out. <laughs> okay, let's do YA books next. I'm so excited. Okay, so this could technically go under like murder mysteries and stuff. It's YA, so I included it here. And it is Pride and Premeditation by Kirza Pr Prince Price. Price. The cover too, it's so good. Okay, so this is a Jane Austen murder mystery. So what drew me to this one is one Jane Austen. I will read anything, like any Jane Austen retelling, anything written by Jane Austen, anything about Jane Austen. I will read it. But not only that, I love murder mysteries. Agatha Christie is one of my favorite writers of all time. So the fact that this combines Jane Austen and like Agatha Christie murder mystery stuff, ah, oh, says that when a scandalous murder shocks London high society, 16 year old law enthusiast, Lizzie Bennett sees a perfect opportunity to prove herself as a formidable litigator, despite the fact that women are only allowed in court as witnesses. Unfortunately for Lizzie, the man accused of the crime already has a flood fledgling lawyer, Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy. I'm loving this so much. I have high hopes for this one. Okay, the next two are probably the two books in this entire haul that I am most excited for and I think have the most beautiful covers. Just looking at them, 
makes me happy. So the first one is The Coming Storm by Regina M. Hansen. The reason I am so hyped for this one is that it's marketed as a ghost story and fairy tale set on Prince Edward Island with Anne of Green Gables vibes. When I saw this at Barnes & Noble, I about died because I was just so excited that I found this. I've never heard anybody talk about this. So it's about our main character who also has red hair just like Anne named Beat McNeil. She has an older cousin named Jerry or Gary. I think it's Jerry. They used to go on adventures together around Prince Edward Island. So then one early spring morning, Jerry is walking up the path and Beat thinks nothing of it. Not until she realizes that he brings with him the scent of blooming roses, but the garden is bare. He's dripping wet and absolutely silent, but he plays a haunting tune on his fiddle that chills Beat to her bones. She realizes that something is very wrong. And then things only get worse when a new woman shows up in town taking interest in Jerry's newborn baby. Local lore is filled with tales of a vicious, shape-shifting sea creature and the cold, beautiful woman who controls it. A woman who, in fact, bears a resemblance to the new woman who just showed up in town. So Beat is determined to find out what happened to her cousin and prevent the same fate from happening to this young man who is trying to win her heart. Does that not sound so good? I will leave a link to this one down below because I have a feeling some of you guys are definitely gonna want to check this one out as well. Okay, so this next one is probably the one that I'm most excited for out of all of these. Um, not only because of the story, but the cover is just probably my favorite cover that I've seen this year. And that is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. What instantly drew me to this one was the cover and also the fact that it's based on the same fairy tale that Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morellier is based on. So it's based on that fairy tale, which I loved reading about so much in Daughter of the Forest. So that's why I'm really excited for this one. Also, it has a map. Books with maps are just superior, don't you guys think? I also do this thing where I read the first sentence and paragraph of the book to see if it's gonna hype me for the book. This is a five star first paragraph, so I'm gonna read it to you. <clears throat> the bottom of the lake tasted like mud, salt, and regret. The water was so thick it was agony keeping my eyes open, but thank the great gods I did, otherwise I would have missed the dragon. It had me at the map in the front, but then dragons? Oh, this is just, it's one of my most anticipated releases. This is like my new treasure baby that I just want to carry around with me everywhere. <laughs> okay, so next up in the YA category, I have Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert, the author of The Hazelwood. I picked this one up at Barnes & Noble and started looking through the first few pages. And what spoke to me was the dedication right here. It says, to all the readers whose first language was fairy tales. That is what convinced me to pick up the book. So the book is full of short fairy tales written by Melissa Albert that I think are all based in the same world as the Hazelwood. I also love the illustration and the colors. I, it really makes me feel like it's like a vintage fairy tale book. And then even just around the outside of the pages. I love all the little details. Like this is the first page, the door that wasn't there. It looks so spooky and perfect for autumn. Okay, another YA one that is, can you guys tell I'm already prepping for autumn? Um, the Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. I literally only picked this one up because I love the cover. I heard some really good reviews on TikTok of a few different girls saying that this is one of their favorite books of the year and that it's about witches. So this one is about our main character and she is an ever witch. And for centuries, witches have maintained the climate. And based on the season they were born in, that's the season that they're the most powerful. So the witch's control is kind of failing because the weather and the climate is just being a bit erratic. And then all of the hope falls on Clara, whose rare magic is tied to all of the seasons. I've heard really good things about this one and I've also heard that it's very atmospheric, which I love. Okay, I need to go faster because the sun is going down. Okay, next I have another perfect one for autumn that I will be saving for spooky season. And that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. What initially drew me to this one was the cover. And I've heard that the atmosphere is very spooky and creepy. And the fact that it is set in Scotland. It's about these children. I think they might be sisters. 
I'm not quite sure, but they disappear on a Scottish city street only to return a month later with no memory of what happened to them while they were gone. And so many people say that it's so creepy and so good. So I'm very, very hyped for this one. Okay, those are all of the YA books. Let's move on to romance. A lot of these are like historical romance. Let's get started with this one. It is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton. And what made me pick this one up is the little blurb on the back right here. And it says, a prim and proper lady thief must save her aunt from a crazed pirate and his dangerously charming henchman in this fantastical historical romance. That is all I know about it and that is all I need to know. Next, I found Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore at my thrift store for $3. You can see I think the... Yeah, the tag is still on here. I've actually already read this one and I really, really loved it. I actually recently started the second book in the series, but I found this hardcover edition from Book of the Month because unless you get it from Book of the Month, there are no hardcover copies published. It's only in paperback. So I wanted to get a hardcover edition of it. I highly recommend this if you like historical romance. Um, it is a little bit more on the steamy side. I prefer clean romances, but I still did enjoy this because I just really enjoyed the story and I feel like it was more than just romance, if that makes sense. And then this one is contemporary romance and it is the Layover by Lacey Walden. I was looking for some really good beach reads because I will be going to the beach next week and a lot of the ones that I was looking at kind of had mixed reviews, but this is one of the ones that I saw that had the most like five star, four or five star reviews. If you've read The Unhoneymooners, I've heard that this is kind of comparable to that. Not to mention that the cover just makes you feel like this is the perfect summer book. It's about a flight attendant and a pilot who are enemies and they find themselves on the same flight. They end up having a really long extended layover in Belize at this really posh five-star resort, but yet they're annoyed that they are there together. And all the blurbs say that it's perfect for summer rom-com fans, which I very much am one of those, so I'm excited for this one. And then another one that I got recently is Blackmore by Julianne Donaldson. This one was so kindly sent to me by Holly. Thank you so much, Holly, for sending this one. Julianne Donaldson is the author of Edenbrook, which is a very well-loved novel, but I'm really excited to read this one next. I'm a huge, huge fan of Edenbrook, so I have very high hopes for this one. So if you can tell by the picture, this is historical romance, and um, it's also clean romance. And the next one that I have is another clean historical romance called Georgiana's Secret by Arlem Hawks. I discovered this one because of Elle over at Elle's Cottage. She included this book. I don't remember if it was on Instagram or YouTube, but as soon as I saw the cover, I was like, oh, that looks really good. What's it about? So then I looked it up and that's when I saw that it takes place on the high seas. I love books that are set on boats, ships, like pirates, anything like that. This one is set in 1810. It's about a girl who has been living on her father's boat disguised as a cabin boy, but she's kind of getting sick of it. She just wants to be herself and break free of this character that she's been playing. Then we have a lieutenant who has no time for love. He really wants to impress and prove himself to the new captain. But then when he sees the captain's cabin boy being harassed by the crew, he immediately puts a stop to it and takes the boy under his wing. And then of course she quickly loses her heart to him but he thinks that she's a boy. It says that it's about two yearning hearts who find safe harbor and possibly lasting love. Yes. Uh, okay, now since they're right here, let's move on to historical fiction. Okay, so I have another book of the month pick, which is Half Sick of Shadows. This is a retelling of a Thorian legend. It just seems like it's gonna be really, really good. That's really all I know about it. But I've been really into like fairy tale retellings, um, Greek mythology retellings, so I have a feeling I'm really gonna like this one. Okay, and then I have, I mean, I think this is also romance as well, historical fiction romance, but, but this is A Strange Scottish Shore by Juliana Gray. The reason why I picked this one up is because one, it's set in Scotland. Also, it involves time travel. I've been really into historical fiction time travel books, not like contemporary time travel, it's gotta be historical time travel. So it's set in Scotland in 1906, and it involves an object that is discovered in an ancient castle. It's set on the remote Orkney Islands. And then one night when they're back in Edinburgh, one of their friends vanishes from the street, like it's just gone. And then their quest takes them through time to find their friend. I've heard some reviews say, 
say that it was just okay, nothing special. And other reviewers say that they absolutely loved it. So I think it's just gonna be one of those kind of cozy books that you need to read at the right time. But I think I will be someone who enjoys it. And then the last one for historical fiction is The Last Garden in England by Julia Kelly. I've actually seen a lot of my patrons talk about reading this book. I can't remember who it was, but there have been a few people who have said that they've read this and enjoyed it and thought I would really enjoy it as well. So what drew me in, of course, was the cover. It's beautiful. It involves the word garden and England, two things that I love. It also has three timelines, present day, 1907, and 1944. So anything set in England in like the 1940s, 1950s, I will read it, as long as it's not very depressing because I'm a sensitive reader and I don't like reading about anything that's too heavy or too sad. But basically all I know is that it's a tale about five women who are connected over time by a very special garden. Okay, and then I actually have some graphic novels. Well, I have one graphic novel and one manga. So let's start with the manga. I'm so excited about this one. It's so like cottage y medieval core. Oh, it's so good. It's Snow White with the red hair. I picked this one up because I've really been enjoying the anime. I've watched I think only the first season, but it's really, really sweet and cute. If you like medieval cottagecore vibes, that is this manga. It's about this girl with beautifully bright red hair who escapes her kingdom because the king is basically wanting to take her as his concubine and she is not having that, so she escapes. And the prince from a neighboring kingdom finds her and kind of takes her in. And she is studying to be, um, I don't remember, something to do with like she does herbal medicine. And so she asks the prince if she can train and take the test to become one of the royal apothecaries in his kingdom. So we see her out in the woods a lot. She loves her plants, she loves animals, being out in nature. It's just a really sweet story. Okay, and then for graphic novels, I have this edition of The Secret Garden, a graphic novel adapted by Mariah Marsden and illustrated by Hannah Lucci. Feel. The illustrations are really pretty and I think this is a must for any Secret Garden fan. I read it for the first time this year and I now love it. So maybe next year I'll read this graphic novel edition. And this was kindly sent to me by Andrew McNeil Publishing. So thank you guys so much for sending this to me. I, I love it. Okay, it's getting a bit late and kind of spooky because it's getting dark, but now, oh, these are some of my favorites. These are the middle grade books. First up, I have this book that is absolutely stunning, and that is Oddity by Eli Brown. She has a snake around her, there's a goblet, and a kind of creepy looking doll right here. This is about a girl named Clover who lives in like an alternate United States. So there are 11 unified states and all Clover dreams of doing is going on adventures. But her practical father thinks otherwise. Across the border in French Louisiana, there are things happening that threaten her peaceful way of life. When her father gets killed defending her, his last words send her on a quest to protect the most necessary oddity, one that could help start a war or end it. And it says, on her journey, Clover encounters a talking rooster, a grinning medicine show performer. What is that? And a secret stealing hat. I think it just sounds like a really fun adventure story. Okay, and then I got this really cute mini edition of Anne of Green Gables. It has gold edges, and I just, I needed this for my Anne collection because I buy as many Anne of Green Gables books as I can. And I think this is the cutest edition that I have. And then I picked up this one that I have been wanting for so long. It's called The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer, which if you watch Glee, you recognize him? I had no idea that he was the author of this book. I picked this up because it's a book for fairy tale lovers. It's about these two twins and their grandmother who gives them a very treasured fairy tale book. And they have no idea that they're about to enter the land of all imagining, the land of stories where fairy tales are real. And I love that even in this paperback edition, if you open up the front, there is a fold out map and I love the quote that he has at the beginning by C.S. Lewis. It's one of my absolute favorites. Someday you will be old enough to start reading fairy tales again. And then for those of you who know how big of a fan I am of The Two Princesses of Bamar by Gail Levine, you'll understand why I got all of these. Okay, so where are they all? I got these three books. The Lost Kingdom of Bamar by, oh, it's not Gail Levine, Gail Carson Levine. 
my bad. This one just recently came out and it is a prequel to The Two Princesses of Vamar, which is such a good, if you like cottagecore, medieval, fairy tale type books, I think you would really love The Two Princesses of Vamar. It's full of adventure and dragons and sisterhood and magic. And then I got Stolen Magic, also by Gail Carson Levine. I basically want to read all of her books because if you like the vibe of Ella Enchanted, like the movie or the book, I think you would really enjoy all of her books. The little blurb for this one says a prophecy, a theft, and a rumbling volcano threatened to destroy Elodie's home. And Elodie is a dragon detective. Oh, sounds so good. Okay, I just realized the camera wasn't fully straight. Tried to fix it. I also turned on some more lights so it doesn't get too dark. But okay, and then I have The Tale of Two Castles, also by Gail Carson Levy. One thing I love about her books is that dragons are almost always included. There really need to be more books with dragons. I'd rather not read, you know, like steamy sex scenes. I want to read about dragons. And I think this might actually be the second book after Stolen Magic because I think they're about the same characters. And then I got this one purely based on the cover, and that is Tangled in Time, The Portal by Catherine Lass. Honestly, the artwork really is what drew me into this one. I love the front and even the back cover. It's about a girl named Rose who has, you know, a great life. And then sadly, one day her mother dies in a car accident and she is sent to live with her grandma. The only place that Rose is able to take refuge is in her grandma's greenhouse. And one night while in the greenhouse, she finds herself transported to a different place and time. So Rose travels back in time to Hatfield House, the home of a banished prince. I love that it takes place in a greenhouse and that it has to do with like, oh, like look at this beautiful like portal. Oh my gosh. I want to go wherever she is. I think the location is going to be beautiful. I think it's going to be atmospheric and the reviews on Goodreads were very promising. Okay. So those are all of the middle grade books. Now we just have classics, which are my favorite. Let's start with my most favorite one, my newest edition of Pride and Prejudice. But this one is special because it contains all of the letters that are written back and forth between Darcy and Elizabeth and Jane and everybody, they are in here. So if you open it up and inside, you can grab the letter. So this one is to Miss Elizabeth Bennett. You'll see that it is from Mr. Darcy. I love the time and effort put into the font and the coloring, how it's brown. There's even a leftover mark of where wax would have gone. So you can read the letters along with the characters in the book. And then when you're done, just slide them back into their little pocket and it's full of them. I love the spine. I love the cover. I wanted this for Christmas, but it got sold out. So Jared didn't get it for me, but we saw that it was recently back in stock on Amazon and we picked it up. So next I have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I have never read any Virginia Woolf, but I've really, really been wanting to because I've been making my way through the famous classics authors, Jane Austen and the Brontes are my favorite, but I've been also trying to make my way through Dickens and now Virginia Woolf. I know a lot of people say that To the Lighthouse is their favorite, but I actually picked up this one because I looked at the introduction and it talked about how this is a revolutionary novel about the day and a life of a woman who runs a few errands, sees an old suitor and gives a very dull party. It says Woolf was among the first writers to understand that there are no insignificant lives, only inadequate ways of looking at them. So that was really what drew me in to Pick up this one and I really like the cover. This is a new edition from Vintage Books and I found this one at Barnes Noble. Okay, and then I picked up this Wordsworth classic edition of Peter Pan. I have never owned Peter Pan. So now I finally have it and it's really, really cute. On the back, there is a ship and it says, just always be waiting for me. I love all the fairies and it looks like pixie dust on the front. Okay, in the last one you saw in my most recent YouTube video, and that is The Complete Grimm's Fairy Tales. I am in love with this book. Not only is it a complete collection of fairy tales, which are my favorite thing to read before bedtime, but this edition is just so stunning. 
I love that the cover is full of flowers and stars and butterflies. And then the back cover, like they didn't spare any detail. Um, there are birds and more flowers and butterflies. Me and Jared have started reading this. Well, he has started reading this to me before bed, kind of as like a bedtime story. And they're so good. It's interesting to see how they're different from the fairy tales that we know now, like Snow White. We read one the other night that was so bizarre. We were laughing the whole way through it. So yeah, I'm really excited to get through all of these. And that is it. We are all done. It's 9, 10 right now. And I started this around seven something. That was a lot of books. <laughs> I would love to hear if you have acquired any new books recently, if you're anticipating any new ones being released soon. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.